Welcome back to another episode of English Cooking. I'm so excited because Christmas is almost here and we are going to make everybody's favorite winter beverage. Not the word beverage. Guys, let me just see if I'm recording. Good, I'm recording. Sometimes I second guess myself. Do you know what that means to second guess? It means you do something, but you're not really sure if you did it. You know, like when you get out of your car and you, you lock your car, you press the button, the, 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 the door locks, right? And then you walk, you're walking to the store and then I think, did, did I lock my, did I lock my car? Nah, I better run back and check. Oh yeah, I did. I, I did lock it, right? So sometimes you second guess yourself. Have you ever second guessed yourself before? I second guess myself all the time. You know, sometimes I leave my house and I wonder, did I lock the door to my house? Huh, I better go back and check. So sometimes I second, let me know, am I the only one or do you also second guess yourself? So that's what it means to second guess yourself. So guys, welcome back to another episode of English Cooking, where I teach you English through cooking. And today we're not really going to cook anything. We're going to make, like I said, everybody's favorite. Unless you're an exception. Are you an exception to the rule? I don't know. Maybe you don't like hot chocolate. Today we're going to make hot chocolate. I think most people, especially for Christmas time, you know, if you think of, a, if you can think of any Christmas beverage, the word beverage means a drink. Beverage is just kind of the most generic word to use for a drink. So a Christmas beverage, like a, a winter beverage could be like, you know, apple cider, right? Uh, that's a, like hot apple cider. That's a common Chris, like Christmas beverage or winter beverage. You know, coffee. Um, <clears throat> you know, sometimes these companies like Starbucks, they'll have like a special kind of coffee for the season, like a, like a pumpkin spice latte. So there are different beverages that you can drink, right? What's your favorite winter beverage? You know, most people love hot chocolate. So today I'm going to teach you guys how to make the best hot chocolate. None of this stupid packet stuff that you buy in the store. You can buy hot chocolate mix in the store. You just, you just open the packet of hot chocolate, you dump it in, you add some hot water, you stir it around and you have hot chocolate. That's not the best quality stuff. Today we're going to make real hot chocolate. So, first thing you need, you're going to need some extra dark organic. Look at that, 85%. 85% dark chocolate. Isn't that going to be a treat? So let's open up this pack of chocolate here. And uh, just gonna snap off a few pieces. Snap means to like break. If something snaps, it kind of makes that sound, right? If something's a little bit brittle, you can use the word snap. Like let's say you're, uh, you're doing something and you break your arm. You could say my arm snapped. Crack. You know, you can hear that, that, that sound. This is because your bones, Bones are really brittle. Well, they're they're like that. When they break, they don't just bend. Like bones don't just kind of bend. They just they break, right? So that's what that's what the word brittle means. If something is brittle, you know, like do I have a cookie? Oh yeah, I just uh, finished making my last video where I made some. I baked some cookies for my future wife. So let's see if these cookies are soft or brittle. What do you think they're gonna be? Well, it's not too brittle. It's a bit brittle, but it's not, uh, it's not really soft, right? See, it's a bit brittle. So anyway, so those cookies were great, by the way. So we're going to snap this. We're going to snap off a strip of chocolate here. Are you ready? Okay, we got that. Look at that, guys. Dark chocolate. Now we're just going to set the chocolate aside and put the chocolate into give you guys let you hear the snap of chocolate again 
Ooh, isn't that a nice sound? <laughs> I love that sound. Put it into your mug. This kind of a cup is called a mug. Usually you drink hot beverages out of a mug, like coffee or tea or hot chocolate, okay? Now you're gonna need a candle. Okay, now this kind of a candle is called a tea light. Look at that, it's just a very small candle. Now I'm not sure why it's called a tea light. Maybe people light it when they're drinking their tea. I don't know. Let me know down in the comments if you know why it's called a tea light. But it's a candle. You could call it a candle, but this this style of candle, really small one in this kind of like metal housing. Oh, hey, in the last episode I taught you guys the word. I was trying to think of a good word for how the, to house the verb like house. Well, actually the word housing is a noun too. This this can I pull the candle out? Yeah, I can pull it out of there, right? So this is the candle's housing, or you could maybe call it a jacket, the candle's jacket. Housing, right? The candle fits in there. The candle lives in there. This is the candle's housing. All right, so um, this is, like I said, it's called a tea light, and uh, we're going to need a tea light. Now, what was I just thinking of? I lost my train of thought. I lost my train of thought. That means if you forget what you were doing, you're going to say something. Oops, I was going to say something. I lost my train of thought. Guys, I, it's gone. See ya. I missed the train, right? I lost that train of thought. So um, we're going to put it under this, uh, this thingamajig. I don't know what this is called. If you don't know what something is called, you can call it a thingamajig or a thingamabob. All right, so get yourself one of these thingamajigs, all right? We're gonna put this thingamabob right down here on my table. We're gonna, well, we're gonna light the tea light with a lighter. So this is called, this kind of a thing is called a lighter, all right? So we're gonna light the tea light. We're gonna light the wick. Okay, now that part of the, like the string, the part that's burning is called the candle's wick. Okay, the wick, it's not the wax. Oh, you can see the wax melting already there. Look at that. The wax is melting, but the wick, the wick is burning. So we're gonna put it under this thingamajig here. And we are going to melt our chocolate. All right, so you're gonna melt your own chocolate, guys. This is, uh, oh man, I'm so excited about this. Have you ever had real hot chocolate or is made from real ingredients? You know, I love food that is made from real ingredients. That's why I hate buying like, you know, processed foods, anything that's already been made. You know, they just put so much garbage into the product. If you, like I said, if you buy like hot chocolate from a, from a store, right? Or uh, if you, uh, if you buy anything, any kind of a product, I, to be honest with you, I don't really eat food that has been pre-made. I just buy the raw ingredients and I make it myself, right? Like even something like chocolate. Now for something like chocolate, right? You have to be careful too, because chocolate itself is a processed food. So very often on the, the ingredients, I always read the ingredients. So what does this say? This is, this is very basic chocolate. So the, I like this stuff. This is good stuff. It says organic, unsweetened chocolate, right? Just your pure chocolate, organic, unsweetened chocolate. And then it also has organic cocoa butter and it has organic cocoa. So it's just, that's, that's it. Right, that's actually, and oh, and sugar, organic uh, cane sugar. So it's got, it's just got the basic stuff. But if you look at the back of chocolate, if you look at the ingredients of a normal chocolate bar, you see all kinds of garbage like soy lecithin. I think that's what that is called, soy lecithin. Like what does soy, why would you want to put soy in chocolate? That doesn't make any sense, right? Well, it's just to give the chocolate a little bit extra bulk. See, the problem with, the thing I really hate about 
companies. And this is why I don't trust companies very much, is companies always try to maximize their profits and minimize their expenses, right? So, I mean, if you want to maximize your profits, you have to basically use the cheapest product, the cheapest quality products as you can, and see if you can charge as, as high of a price as you can. So you kind of have to find that balance. What are the customers willing to pay? And the people who make products, they know most customers are stupid. They don't read the ingredients, right? So nobody's gonna, nobody, like, maybe I'm the only one who does this. Let me know, do you do this? When you go shopping, do you actually look at a product and read the ingredients? Here in Canada, you have to, by law, put all the ingredients, you know, whatever you're putting in here, if it's something sold in like a grocery store. You know, so you have to uh, list the ingredients. Now, I think you have to list the ingredients in order of the most um, the most prevalent ingredient in the product. The word prevalent means the most like common or the most occurring. Okay, so let's say what 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 do they have the most of in here? Well, it's you know, organic unsweetened chocolate. That's the most. Sugar is the last one. So that means it probably doesn't have very much sugar. And if we look here at the um, at the nutritional information, <clears throat> I'll just show you the nutrition facts there. Nutrition facts. It says sugar is 8 grams. Okay, so 8 grams of sugar per 7 pieces of chocolate. So that means like per piece of chocolate, like let me just break this, break this off. All right, so per piece of chocolate, it only has, there we go, only has one gram of sugar, about, maybe just over a gram of sugar. So that's actually pretty good. Like if you, if you look at any other product, it's going to be just packed full of sugar. So many sugars, right? And so, so I like to, anyway, I like to look at the list of ingredients to make sure I'm not buying a whole bunch of garbage. If you buy like breakfast cereals, that's really kind of makes me a bit angry how even just those just really sugary breakfast cereals will be advertised to kids, right? And they'll say like high in vitamins, you know, you need, kids need their vitamins. So eat our cereal, whether it's like Fruit Loops or Frosted Flakes or all this, all that kind of garbage cereal, right? Companies are trying, companies use the cheapest possible stuff the cheapest possible sugar, the cheapest possible oil. Like very often here in Canada, they, almost all products have canola oil or palm oil or these kind of low grade oils. I like to cook with uh, olive oil. That's all I cook with. I don't use any other kind of oil, right? I use my, uh, my organic extra virgin olive oil. You know, it's, it's the best quality. I, I can taste it. It's not like these, um, hydrogenated oils the word hydrogenated if you're interested in <laughs> if you're interested in food quality and you're interested in like chronic diseases chronic health issues you probably you, you you probably take things into your own hands right you go to a doctor the doctor says you're healthy you're fine there's nothing wrong with you but you say but I'm sick the doctor says just go home forget about it there's nothing wrong with you Okay, the doctor can't do anything for me, so I'm going to do stuff on myself. And you go home and you start researching on the internet for weeks and months and maybe years. And you start to learn some things about health. I've done that in my life. Doctors, for the most part, have been completely useless to me in my life. So I've done so much research on different foods. And you, when people have health issues that, are, that there's no solution to, they have to take the matter into their own hands. Okay, so that's what it means. You take it into your own hands. That means you take responsibility for your own situation. So um, one thing you might you might do some research on is hydrogenated oils, right? Oils that are really cheap and uh, they're 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 not uh, they're not good quality. They're they've the body doesn't like doesn't like them. So. Anyway, so those kinds of things like GMO foods and, uh, you know, all this kind of garbage. They put so much garbage in our foods, right? So that's why I like to take control of my, of, my, of my diet. I like to read 
the label. What am I going to eat? What am I putting in my body? I don't want to put garbage in my body. So that's my pep talk for you guys. Take your health into your own hands. And when you go shopping, buy products that is actually like just the most basic ingredients and then go cook it yourself. Like I said, I mean, I'm, I'm making my own hot chocolate here. I could go to the store. I could buy some cheap pack of, of, of hot chocolate and just dump it in here. It's just a powder form, right? You dump it in, you add some hot water, you stir it, it's done. But that's not really good. It tastes, you know, quality makes all the difference. When it comes to cooking, the quality of the food, by, by doing it yourself and using the raw ingredients, you are, you know, you're doing yourself a real favor. If you do yourself a favor, that means you're doing something good for yourself. And if you cook for your loved ones, you're using like raw ingredients. Now, I wish I had a farm and I wish I could grow my own food. You know, that would be awesome. I'd, lo I'd love to do that one day, but um, I live in the city. Can't really grow my own food here. So anyway, that's my dream. So guys, the chocolate is melting here. Ooh, wow, that is looking great. So, um, you know what, I should have just grabbed a spoon, dig through my cutlery holder here for my golden spoon. Guys, I have a golden spoon. I know some people like to, uh, oh, there it is. There's my golden spoon, guys. <laughs> some people have commented on my, uh, on my golden cutlery. This is my little mini golden spoon. What do you think about that? So guys, I'll just show you what we have here, what we're working with here. It's uh, pretty much all melted. Can you see that? I don't want to dump it out. That's what it's, uh, that's what it looks and looking like there. So it's uh, mostly melted. You want to take about four pieces of chocolate. It's up to you. Now, um, it depends on your time constraints. Time constraint means how much time do you have, right? Do you, are you constrained? Do you have a, like a time limit? So it depends on your time constraints. You might want to speed up this process a little bit, right? I'm using a tea light. You could get yourself a bigger candle, a bit a better heat source, like, but you know what? Sometimes it's nice just not to rush things. Just do something slow and then enjoy the process of it. Like right now, I'm really enjoying talking to you guys. Thank you for joining me. I really appreciate your company. You guys are so awesome. I love you so much. So I really appreciate you. Thank you for joining me in this video and all my other videos. It's such an honor to have you as my subscriber and friend. So the next thing um, you're gonna need now, it's pretty much all melted here, okay? I'll just wait another three seconds and then it'll be melted, okay? One Mississippi. Two Mississippi, three Mississippi. <laughs> All right, it's done. Uh, the, sometimes people add the word Mississippi in between their counting their numbers because it 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 kind of controls the speed of their counting, right? So sometimes people will say you need to add a Mississippi in between your numbers. Right, let's say kids are playing a game like hide and seek, right? And the kid, the one, the person who's um, who's it. If you're it, that means you're the one who has to go catch everyone or find everyone. Okay, so the person who's it has to let's say count to ten. Everybody else has to run away. So the kid might count really fast, right? Like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, here I'm, I'm ready. I'm coming. That doesn't give the other kids enough time to go hide. So they, the kid has to count at a reasonable pace. So they might say you have to count with Mississippis, right? So the kid has to say one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, right? And, uh, just to pace himself a little bit and then go and find everybody else. So anyway, guys, we did our Mississippi counting and now, um, now it's all melted. You can see it's like perfectly, perfectly melted there. Um, now we're gonna add some milk. Okay, now this is the part where you can uh, choose what you wanna do. If you wanna do things the right way, you can just kinda let it slowly heat and let the, uh, let the chocolate kinda just melt into the milk. 
But if you want to speed things up, you're in a hurry or something like that. If you want to do things kind of a, uh... oh, look at that chocolate, guys. Mmm, man, that's good. Mmm, <laughs> wow. If you want to speed things up, pop it in the microwave. I know I don't like microwaves. I actually never use my microwave. Okay, I've lived in this, this house for a while. I've used the microwave maybe once or twice. I don't like microwaves. I don't believe in them. I believe they're not a healthy way to cook food or to heat up food. But if you want to just do something really fast, you could pop it in the microwave, okay? So we're gonna just going to pop it in here for... Uh, Let's pop it in for two minutes. Let's start, okay, it's going. All right, so it's, uh, it's warming up there. Now, I guess we can blow out our, should we blow it out or should we just leave it there for a good effect? It's kind of nice. I actually kind of like a candle burning. I never have candles burning in my house, but it's nice. I should. Should light some. I should set some tea lights around my house. Or do you think I would burn down my house? I don't know. But anyway, now here in Canada and the U.S. and maybe other countries like England or Australia, we like to put marshmallows in the hot chocolate. Have you ever had mar hot chocolate with marshmallows? Marshmallows are like the perfect thing to put into hot chocolate, especially chocolate like this. It's not very sweet, right? I mean, like I said, this is, um, I wish I could give you a, a taste of it. It's pretty bitter, actually. I know it said eight grams of sugar, but like I said, that's eight grams per seven squares. So this gram only, this, this piece of chocolate only has like one gram, so it's actually very bitter. Now there's sugar in milk. Milk is naturally kind of sweet, right? But if you want it kind of a little bit more sweet, then what you need to put in is marshmallows, okay? Now in this recipe, which is my personal hot chocolate recipe, this is the original Mark's hot chocolate recipe, okay? You're gonna need three marshmallows. You're gonna need a mini marshmallow. Look at that, that's called a mini marshmallow. You're gonna need a regular marshmallow. Okay, just a, just a normal sized. This is it. Ooh, that is good. Guys, let's put it in for another 30 seconds. Okay, that'll be, then that'll be perfect, okay? So this kind of marshmallow is called a mini marshmallow. This marshmallow is called a regular marshmallow it's not just a normal size and then you need a jumbo marshmallow look at that that's a big one that's called a jumbo marshmallow now with marshmallow sizes you need to use those words right so sometimes in english there are very specific words that you that you have to use to describe something so you can't call this a big marshmallow that's not the name of it. It's a jumbo. The name is a jumbo marshmallow. So if you go buy these marshmallow marshmallows in the store, like you go to here like to Walmart or Superstore or something, you'll see on the pack of, of marshmallows it'll say jumbo. So this is this kind, the size of marshmallow is called a jumbo marshmallow. This this one is called a mini marshmallow. You can't say small marshmallow. That's not its name. The name is mini, a mini marshmallow. Now this one, it would just be a regular, a regular sized marshmallow. Okay, so we're gonna grab our hot chocolate here. Ooh, yep, it's steaming a little bit here. And now we're gonna put in our marshmallows, all right? And we are just gonna watch them melt. Now marshmallows melt um, in heat, right? So we're just gonna just gonna dunk them here a little bit in the uh... oh man guys <laughs> this is gonna be so good this is gonna be incredible okay come on yeah you can see that it's kind of melting right it's uh... 
Yeah, it might take a while for the jumbo marshmallow to melt, but um, you don't need to even melt them all the way. You just want to melt it a little bit just to get some of that sugar out of there and just to get it a little bit, a little bit sweeter. Oh man, I wish you could join me guys for this. Mark's special hot chocolate for Christmas time. Christmas is right around the corner here. So I hope you guys are excited. I'm excited. If something is right around the corner, that means it's coming very quickly. It's almost here. So it's, I could say Christmas is right around the corner. Maybe uh, your birthday, is your birthday, does your birthday coincide with the Christmas season? If something coincides with something, it means it happens at the same time. Right? So some people's birthday coincides with Christmas. You know, maybe Christmas is on December 25th, right? Every year it's the same day, December 25th. If your birthday is on like, let's say December 21st or December like 28th or something like that, then your birthday coincides with Christmas. I mean, it doesn't, we don't need to, you don't need, you don't need, you don't need to be born exactly on December 25th to say your birthday coincides when people talk about Christmas, they, they're talking about like the season. So even though Christmas Day is December 25th, the whole Christmas season, you know, kind of is kind of the month of December. So even if you're born on probably like December 13th or 15th or something like that, you could say, yeah, my birthday coincides with Christmas. Coincide just means it's it happens at the same time. Okay, so let's check on our... Oh wow, yeah, that's nice and melted. The the big one, yeah, the jumbo. Jumbo marshmallow is taking its sweet time. If something takes its sweet time, it means it's taking a while. Right, so actually the, the that's all that's left of the the regular marshmallow right there. I don't know what happened to the mini marshmallow, it's probably gone already. But here we got the uh, the jumbo marshmallow and it's taking its sweet time. It means it's taking a while to melt. All right, so we're just going to keep kind of stirring it here. Oh, wow. You can see it's kind of nice and frothy. The melted marshmallow kind of makes the, the hot chocolate kind of frothy, right? That stuff, that kind of white stuff is can be called froth. Froth. It's kind of uh, nice and like bubbly. You can see the bubbles in there. Oh, wow, that's good, guys. <laughs> that is so good. Okay, so um, let's, well, we don't have to melt this jumbo one all the way. It's still, it's pretty good the way it is. All right, so now we're going to add a dash of, let's add a dash of cinnamon. Look at that, I've got some cinnamon here. We're going to add a dash. Okay, so this is what a dash means. That's a dash of cinnamon. Right, so that's a, a unit of measurement. Sometimes recipes will say add like a pinch of salt or add a dash of cinnamon or something like that. So that's what a dash is. It's like, that's a dash. Okay, so we added our dash of cinnamon. Now, we're going to add a drizzle of maple syrup. A drizzle, can we use that as a noun? A drizzle, I don't think we can. Actually, I said it wrong. I should just say, we're going to drizzle some maple syrup onto our hot chocolate. Okay, so drizzle is a, is a verb. Um, look at that. Pure maple syrup. Wow. Now, we're going to drizzle it. What does drizzle mean? It means just give it a very light, kind of a light, um, you'll see. Okay, now I'm going to drizzle it, right? So I just, I'm drizzling the maple syrup on the hot chocolate. So that's what it means to drizzle. Like very often in recipes, if you're baking a cake or cookies or something like that, it'll say to drizzle something on the cake. You know, it might be like not icing. You know, in the last uh, episode of English cooking, we made cookies. Right, and I, I iced the cookies, like I used a knife and I spread it on there, right? So icing is too thick, you can't drizzle icing, but um, for, for a very thin kind of icing, like a glaze, 
you know, a glaze is like a very thin sugary coating. So you could drizzle glaze on onto a donut or a cookie or a cake or something like that. Okay, so any kind of really liquid sugary substance we if you're in, in baking, the verb is drizzle, to drizzle. Okay, so I just drizzled a little bit. It just means to put a bit, not too much, right? So you can see in English we have these very specific words um, for different situations, right? So for a powder, like for cinnamon, the perfect word to use is a dash, a dash of cinnamon. But for a liquid, like maple syrup, the very specific word is to drizzle, to just drizzle a little bit of maple syrup on to the, uh, or into, onto or into, I don't know, kind of goes into the, uh, the, the beverage. So we're just going to stir it around here a little bit, guys. Oh, wow. Yeah, you can see our, what's left of our jumbo marshmallow there. Most of it's melted. There's still a decent chunk left. Oh, wow, guys. Should we do a taste test? Mark's original homemade hot chocolate. Welcome, guys. Merry Christmas. I love you so much. Let's, uh, let's do a taste test here before we sign off. What do you say? Do you want the first sip? of Mark's original hot chocolate with marshmallows, a dash of cinnamon, and uh, a drizzle of maple syrup. I think you can use it as a noun. You know, like I said in my last lesson of English cooking, I said we talked about nouns and verbs, right? How you can kind of very often use the, a noun as a verb and vice versa. Well, I just used it as a noun, okay? So I don't know if it's officially a noun, the word drizzle. But I used it that way. So I said, add a drizzle, right? Nouns are usually preceded by articles like a, an, and the. So I, I added a drizzle of maple syrup. And you know, being a Canadian, it has to be maple syrup, right? Here in Canada, we, we live off this stuff. This is our lifeblood. Our lifeblood. If something is your lifeblood, <laughs> that means it's your. It's it, it, very important. It's everything. It's everything you need. It's like your. It's the most important thing. It's your lifeblood. So here in Canada, oxygen is not our lifeblood. Maple syrup is our lifeblood, my friends. All right. So I'll just take. Uh, should I? Should I use my spoon or should I just take a sip? Let's just take a sip here. Mmm. <laughs> yes! That is so good, guys. Man, that is good. That's sweet. It's sweet because of the, the, maple, sh uh, the maple syrup, the, the marshmallows, and uh, the cinnamon gives it that nice, like, winter flavor. And that's the dark chocolate. Oh man, what a drink. What a special day. Oh guys, my tea light went out. Look at that. Look at all that melted wax. I don't want to dump it out, otherwise it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna pour out onto my table. But anyway, there you have it guys. Grab yourself a thingamajig or a thingamabob. And Bob's your uncle. Right, when if you do a bunch of stuff and then you say, Bob's your uncle, that's a phrase we use. Now I made a video about that. I'll post it. I'll try to post it up here somewhere at the end of this video so you can watch that. That's a great, that's a great idiom in English. Bob's your uncle. So if I'm telling you how to make this recipe, I can say first melt the chocolate, add some milk, put it in the microwave, add some marshmallows and Bob's your uncle. Bob's your uncle. That means it's done. Easy. All right. So. Thank you guys again. I just want to say a very special, uh, a special thank you for always uh, sticking with me here at Mad English TV for another, another year. This year's almost over. So we got Christmas and then New Year's is right around the corner as well. So I'm excited. Let me know if you're excited down there in the comments. So I'm sp sending you all my love from here in Calgary, Alberta, even though it's winter wonderland. Send me some warmth back if you're from a warm country. 
And uh, yeah, well, on that note, guys, I'll sign off for now. Have a great day, stay safe, and I'll see you over in the next episode of English Cooking. Take care.